Hey guys, this is Truck Dog, Proof of Life. Today has been a hell of a day. So yesterday my heat pump died and so the guy came out and he was like, yeah, it's fucked. The guy that installed it, uh, he, he soldered some shit fucked up and it's been pissing refrigerant. And you can go out there and run your, run your finger along the side of the compressor and yeah, it's all oily and, you know, dog fur and dust. It's all stuck to it. So 1500 bucks to fix that. They got to pump it all out, rebraze it. Don't know if I need new valves yet. Uh, purge it with nitrogen. I don't know if they pressurize it with nitrogen. I assume they just purge it. And then uh, vacuum it out, suck it down. And then uh, put the refrigerant back in. And uh, that $1,500 quote only covers 10 pounds of refrigerant. And who knows how much it's going to need. I think it's like a, I think it's like a 15-pound system. I, I think I remember reading that in the brochure. But anyways, that was yesterday's bullshit. And then today I wake up and I, I have the heat pump disconnected just running off the gas furnace. You go to the settings in your Ecobee and you say auxiliary heat only, which is the gas. So cool, no problem. It's running off the gas furnace. Everything's nice and toasty until I wake up this morning and find out that there's been some sort of fault between the thermostat and the air handler where it wanted to do a wake up cycle and run the heat pump first to pre warm the vents before it turned on the gas heater. So uh, without the main uh, forced air blower working, of course, the gas furnace wouldn't turn on today. And uh, it took a lot of reading and dicking around with that Ecobee to try and get it to a, a place where we have heat again. And it's not that cold. It's only 40 out. We'd be fine. I'm not going to die. And then uh, after fucking with that, I went to the dentist and got six fillings and a uh, temporary crown because my insurance is ending on the 31st. So they had me do a marathon chair session. So I feel great. But I did get some news that's worthy to share. Um, this was that unit that was having problems dragging the clutch at... Um, when it warmed up anything over 140 degrees and it would start dragging the clutch in every gear. And, uh, my buddy Adam at a one, I think I've mentioned him before. He's been really helpful, uh, helping me understand the inner workings of torque converters, just kind of being my mentor and stuff like that. So I just want to kind of show you what we found here. And this is a, uh, this is a high zoo converter. From a very, uh, you know, fancy builder, I guess. Somebody I looked up to at one point. And essentially, it's been assembled incorrectly. So, they call it triple disc. You got three frictions, right? You got this friction. You got this one, which has a friction on both sides. And... I don't know if you can see this. It has to be stacked in there correctly because you see that each one of these little notches is raised up a little bit, okay? So you cannot take this friction and put it in here first. If you do that, it will never apply, or actually it will apply, apply if you give it enough pressure. And it will have to use so much pressure that it'll put a slight dish in your friction. The way it's supposed to be assembled is this goes in here first. And you can definitely see, I mean, it's almost like a wave plate in a uh, early 4 LEDE. That thing's got a monster dish to it. Anyways, the way it's supposed to be assembled is this one goes in first this one goes in second and that way these can you know articulate up and down it's that 
you know, they build that in there so that this kind of sits off unless the clutches are applied. So converter builder error cost this guy. I mean, there's, there's no telling. I, I think he says that this, this transmission builder and converter builder has cost him three or $4,000 extra. And I mean, to do what I've done, which is get him a nice single billet, $600 converter and uh, go through his transmission and make it right. Uh, it's going to be another $1,200 for him. And uh, I don't know why they expect a 3,600 stall converter for a sand truck with a stock cam six liter with a Whipple, but it absolutely does not need 3,600 RPM to get into the power band. The thing probably makes 300 foot pounds of torque at a thousand RPM. You know what I mean? A Whipple is almost like completely linear with the throttle. But I just wanted to show you that, be careful who you buy your parts from, man. It's, it's not the same as it used to be. Uh, this core is probably still good aside from these clutches. He said all the bearings and everything were good. Um, I mean, it's not a bad assembly. You know, everything's brazed. I know this, this probably looks kind of nasty to you, but some of the cores that come in are just rusty as shit. And that, that's just how they look. It's not gonna affect, it's not gonna affect uh, how the converter functions. So that kind of schmoo that you see there, it's been sandblasted. That's why it looks all pitted. It's not a problem. And the pressure plate itself looks like it's in good condition. Uh, my converter guy doesn't want to work on this because he only uses Sonax back half kits and he doesn't know what this is. He's like, it might be a precision that I haven't seen before. It might be a TSI but we only use Sonex, so take it and uh, and it's your problem now. But he did show me that, that was, those clutches were stacked in there incorrectly when it was built. And that was most likely the cause of uh, the converter failure and eventually the transmission failure. So a little update for you. Hope you guys are doing good. Have a rad Ramadan, a happy Hanukkah, and a hell of a cool Christmas.